Hello and welcome to Tech 18. I'm Muhammad Adnan and in this video we are going to talk about the next topic of this course which now we'll cover about Dataflow Gen 2 and the amazing Microsoft Fabric SQL. Yeah, so Microsoft has recently introduced Fabric SQL databases. So we can directly create transactional SQL databases in Fabric itself. And it is really simple to create those things. We'll talk about that in detail. But before do that, if you are new to this channel or if you haven't subscribed yet, just click on the subscribe button and also press the bell icon to get the latest notifications. Now let's get started. So SQL database in Microsoft Fabric is a developer friendly transactional database based on Azure SQL database that allows you to easily create your operational database in Fabric. A SQL database in Fabric uses the same SQL database engine as Azure SQL database. So this is an important thing, right? So this is based out of the same foundation of Azure SQL database here. Now moving into my Fabric here, I just have logged in here. First of all, we need to create SQL database. For that, we need to click on new and then we can just look for the information here SQL. So once you look here, you can see at the bottom SQL database here. Let me zoom in. Yeah, this should be fine. So SQL database, which is in preview because it is recently introduced for Microsoft. So you need to click on that and just specify the name here. So it can be SQL underscore machine underscore zero one. I'll just use YouTube here and then we just need to use underscore and click on create. That's it. As simple as that. So you don't need to worry about what should be the resource capacity, how you need to use this one, what are the cores you need to select, like how we usually do while creating SQL Server database in Azure. So they have simplified everything. They have taken care of all these things behind the scene. We just need to create like creating an Excel file because that's the beauty of Fabric, right? For all the experience, whatever we have, whether it can be Spark, whether it can be database SQL, whether it can be KQL database or anything else. We just need to create like simple file creations as simple as that. So coming here, we can see this database showing up here. And if I expand as usual, the default DBO dot schema, and then you can see the tables, views, stored procedures and functions. Everything is here. And instead of that, for now, there is nothing. So we have multiple options here. You can use the sample data or we can use new data flow gen 2 and new data pipeline. Or you can use the T-SQL uh, if you want to start the developing process just to practice by yourself. You can use a connection string of this one. So basically, I just want to use Dataflow Gen 2 here in order to import the data inside to this one. So we can just click on this new Dataflow Gen 2 from here or also directly create a new Dataflow Gen 2. This can be we can directly go to data workspace and then click on new Dataflow Gen 2. We can create that. But that is actually not going to create the connection from Dataflow Gen 2 into Azure SQL. In order to simplify that, we can create new Dataflow Gen 2 within this Fabric interface itself. But before going into that, um, let me, if you want to connect to your SQL database outside of Microsoft Fabric, then you can just click here, open in, and then we have an option VS Code, which is Visual Studio Code, and then SQL Server Management Studio. That's a cool feature, right? You can actually connect to your SQL database of Fabric outside of the fabric. That's amazing thing. So we can use the same connection. If you're building an application, you can actually use that. And then you can use the connection string with that in your application itself. So the bigger advantage of this one is you don't need to buy any transactional databases from any provider. Microsoft provides that even not even in Azure SQL. So if you already have, that's a different story. But if you're just starting up of your modernization journey, then you can directly use this fabric SQL and you can directly use this connection string within your application. So whenever user enters anything on the application, it can go directly into that itself. So actually that is a small part which I'm going to cover later part of this series, but I recommend you to watch that, uh, that series as well. But here the point we can use Dataflow Gen 2 as this case, I can just click on this one. 
and it's going to open up data flow part and on the top it has created already so you can just click here rename it here which can be data flow machine um, as usual i'm giving the name here underscore zero one yt so hit enter so it is going to change the rename here now in the data flow gen 2 we have multiple options import excel import sql server import text or anything else so if you want to create that we can also use import an excel file or import a text of csv i think we have a csv file or else excel file either it can be so not an issue i just click on import excel here it is asking to link a file or upload a file now even if you upload a file it is actually being stored this csv or excel file in the sharepoint location i will show you that so if you click on this browse here and if i select here something which is technicians for example and click on open this is going to uploading the process that's showing up here and once this is uploaded i will show you where it is actually uploading up here now you can see it is actually created a connection here it is showing up here uh, that's my domain name the sharepoint name and then adnan underscore take 18 dot com underscore dot com that's kind of my personal thing so it has saved all this csv files over there itself and then you can click on open file location from here if i click here this is going to open up that file location whatever the file which we manually uploaded is going to show up all the files here as you can see i uploaded all these things and before to that itself i actually uploaded the technicians so right now this is showing up here this symbol which refers to the technician here uh, is the new one it has already added a space one as a name here so behind the scene it will take those references as you can see it has given also a space one as a copy of that table so i can click on next here so once this is done it's going to create a, a connection between that sharepoint location csv files and then showing up here as my excel file has this sheet one itself it is giving me information and then I can click on create here. So once you do so, it's going to add the table based on the sheet name. I can rename it here as I need, which is technician. And this is going to read all this information here. If I hide this top ribbon for now, and you can see it is showing up the source, navigation, and then it will do all this stuff like promoted header, change data type. Those are the some default thing which it usually does, right? So it will cover all those things here. And not only that, in the data destination actually i covered the detail things in the previous videos somehow that's error is strange but this is the thing okay it has not taken up all the next step here but anyway we can also click on this part and then click on use first row as headers and then we can also manually change the data type here so this can be whole and this can be text that's it now in the sql database destination it has already added here because we created this data flow within fabric sql so that's why the destination is already added here as you can see it is showing up the workspace machine 01 and database and update method is replaced here so if you want to change those things then you can just click on this gear icon then this will connect to your fabric sql database that's a new connections available in fabric and then click on next and here it shows all the available databases which we have this is basically the workspace name that's a folder and inside to that if you have a multiple sql databases that it will show everything here so right now i selected this one and it will look for the information whether this particular table is available there on that database or not if i click on machine 01 it is a new table will be created here then it will give me a message that the tables already exist on this particular database um, i think the same name is not available i have this technician master so uh, in but for now i am using this uh, machine 01 yt so I'm selecting here using this technician itself for now and then click on next. So validating data destination and it's just verifying this whole number and text that is applicable data type here and click on save setting. That's it. Now you need to just click on publish here. And also if you notice here, this is showing up here, this in italic symbol, which means this staging data flows, which I discussed earlier part of my SQL in the fabric videos. If you haven't seen that, you can just check out those videos as well. And if I right click here and you can see this is the enable staging. So this is something nothing but uh, what we used to have in Power Query in Power BI Desktop as enable load, right? So that's similar thing here. So enable staging. So if you do this one as a quick note, um, it's going to load this transformation, whatever we are doing up here in a separate data flow and then load into destination. So that's how it will process. But for now, as we are not doing that, it's going to directly do this transformation within this Power Query and then going it directly to Fabric SQL. So you need to click on publish here, then only it will just publish this information and refresh the data flow and it will load the data into Fabric SQL. Now let's move on to Fabric SQL uh, for now. 
So if I click again on the left hand side, the fabric SQL. So and then if I click on refresh, it should not have any tables for now. That's correct. And let's have a look into the workspace for the data flow to get refreshed here. I hope this is a very small thing. So it will get refreshed within few seconds or few minutes. So let's wait for that. But until then, again, if you are new to this channel or if you haven't subscribed yet, just click on the subscribe button and also press the bell icon to get the latest notifications. And don't forget to like and share this video with others. So this video series is going to be very interesting one. I really request you to watch this till the end, the multiple series. If you are a prime member, then you will get early access to all those videos. You can also buy it from my website as well. Okay, this is now refreshing. So let's go back to the setting refresh history and just to see. So it is in progress here. That's cool. Oh, there is a new icon option available. So you can refresh directly from here itself. That's pretty cool. Yeah, now the refresh is completed. If I click here and then refresh history, then it should be succeeded here. And now let's go to Fabric SQL and you can just click here and then hit refresh. If you expand this table, now I can see this technician table available here. That's pretty amazing. So now if I click here, I can able to see those information here. So as simple as that. So we can use Dataflow Gen2 in order to use SQL um, to ingest the data into SQL from different different sources here. And Dataflow Gen2 is really powerful that you can connect with multiple different 100 plus data sources and then do the transformation and then load it into Fabric SQL. This is going to be a really amazing thing um, in future. And I'm not sure about whether this is going to be free for every time like other fabric workloads. It may be charged in future, but right now this is in preview. So it is free of cost. We can use that. So this is good. And if you want to create views, stores, pieces, or is everything is same, similar, seamless, you can connect uh, as when required. So just as an information, if you want to connect to Visual Studio Code or SQL Server Management Studio, when you click on any of those things, if I click here, it's going to give a server name and database name. And then if you click here and then Management Studio, then it's going to give a server name and database name. So you don't need to miss both the things because it, whatever it has given this good ID and with the database and good ID, everything you need to copy and paste as is. Because if you do without this one, then this will not connect, it will throw an error for you. So I highly recommend that you use the same server name and database name here. I think this is a short video about the introduction of how the Fabric SQL for this particular thing. If you want to know something in detail, please let me know in the comment section below. And also, um, I hope you are watching the series continuously about the sequence. And let me know in the comment section how this entire series so far has been. That's highly valuable for me to get an input and then improve further on. I believe I'm improving day by day. And most of the things is like, I need your help in order to in increase my channel. So I need your help in order to subscribe to my channel. So I highly request you to subscribe to my channel and like and share this video with others. Thanks for learning. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.